we have seen the same problem again and again, like when we take up a consulting role with a company and once your application gets to production, so you always end up building some custom uh, management tools like it, that should be actually like a, should be part of the platform. Like the customers shouldn't build those kind of things. Like uh, how can we give better uh, access to, uh, to people? Like uh, how can we do governance auditing? Like who stopped that, who started that? All those kind of things. So, so after seeing the problem again and again, just we just ended up building this one, and we had an initial version, and then the rest of the product for the last 18 months is actually built from customer feedback. So we didn't have plan to build what we have now, but it's completely driven by customers. Okay, so there's a it's it's basically an end-to-end -end operational tool uh, for your environment. So we are not classifying ourselves as a purely as a monitoring solution. So, so once your application in production, like uh, how you can manage your it on a you can efficiently on a, on a day to day basis. So we got a lot of dashboards. We got a set of tools to enhance your productivity and and and, and monitoring is one aspect. Like we, that's also should be part of your solution. You, once your application is running, the health of the application and whether they are running successfully or not. All those things are very critical for your day-to-day -day operations. And we think the development of your application may take six months, but the life of that application may be five years or 10 years, whatever. So it's important once your application gets to production, then how you're going to manage it from that point onwards. So the, the, these are some of our design initial design goals, like why you need something like Bistock 360. And the number one point is we wanted to make sure you can support your BizTalk infrastructure without a BizTalk person. So that's a kind of a challenge now. So if you got an application in production, you always need a experienced BizTalk person. So you can't hand over the existing BizTalk admin console to somebody who doesn't know anything about BizTalk. So, so, so for example, you may have like a couple of years experience .NET developer you wanted to use for your, uh, your operation side of things. But it's a bit challenging at the moment to, to, to hand over that stuff to that, that, that person. So our number one design goal is to how we can eliminate that problem, like how we can hand over your operations to a non bistock person. So all, most of our toolings are around on the dashboards and things like that, what we have in Bistock is, is based on that. And the second big challenge is around governance auditing. So Bistock is a middleware product, right? It's, it's used as an enterprise product, and a lot of places it, it's, it, the criticality of Bistock is, is crucial. Like a lot of your core businesses run on Bistock. And it's important to have like a, some level of a governance auditing, like who stopped that send port, who started that orchestration, who stopped that host instance, and things like that. So at the moment, it's a challenge, right? So somebody who got an access to the Bistock admin console, they can go quietly turn off a host instance. And probably you won't be able to figure out. You know, you, you basically like you work on a lot of times. The Bistock support is is on trust, so you trust the people who are supporting it. So they, you think they won't do any harm. So that's how it's working. But that shouldn't be the case in an enterprise scale. So that's one thing we want to address. Uh, the third is around advanced authorization uh, security at one place. So the, the current challenge at the moment is like if you want this. It's difficult to give like a very fine grind authorization. So you can have a, people either in an operator group or in an administrator group. And in, in my personal experience, anybody supporting, they will be an administrator group. It's very rare scenario. You will have people purely on an operator group and then supporting your environment. It's nearly impossible. I know my so guys are here, but that's, that's, that's the reality. Uh, so we wanted to work on how we can enhance that, how we can do the authorization at a very fine grained level. For example, you may have 20 applications in your environment, but you wanted to give access to only five applications to a group of people or an individual. So they don't want to see other people's data and uh, other people's suspended instances and things like that. And also that reduces the complexity. Like when you open the tool, they're looking at things which are relevant to them, not the whole environment. So. So you got a plus as well, and also the other other challenges around when you look at the uh, when you look at the current support for Bistock, it's not just Bistock admin console. You need to have access to SQL Server Management Studio. You need to have access to BAM portal. You need to have access to ESB portal. You need to have access to SCOM consoles, and you need to have access to Event Viewers. 
And we end up having like seven or eight different tools you need to for have the particular person need to have access to. And also the challenge is like you need to have security set up in all these places. So you need to have the, you need to ask your DBA to set up SQL rights for this person. You need to ask your SCOM guy to give right level of uh, console access to this person, and it goes on, on and on. So it's it, it just it's just a widespread thing. So we wanted to make it as a one tool, like you can use it for operation and bring everything to this one single place and, and manage it. And the ability to share infrastructure is like, as I mentioned before, like when you got like 20 different applications in the environment, you just wanted to make it easy, like uh, uh, people can share the infrastructure. So BizTalk is not, a, it's, it's, a, it's a relatively expensive product. So even if you look at a standard highly available uh, environment, like uh, two BizTalk servers and two SQL servers and an enterprise license, we are talking in the range of $100,000 to set up an infrastructure. So the companies, they wanted to maximize their investment. So at the moment, like even if you have spare capacity on the infrastructure to take additional projects, they won't do that because it's a risk of like a, a high-profile project running and you don't want to have like a, some low-profile project coming in and people accessing that using the admin console and things like that. So that's one thing, we, but, but it's, it's a combination, like with the help of the advanced authorization, we can achieve this capability of uh, having a shared infrastructure. And the, the final point is around monitoring. Uh, we wanted to make it as easy as possible to mo configure the monitoring required from a BizTalk server perspective. Like, uh, we, 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 with, the, with our consulting experience, like always when you ask for a, what's your monitoring requirement, it only comes with like 10 different sets of things they wanted to monitor, right? We wanted to monitor receive locations, send ports, orchestration, host instances, some NT services, and some disk spaces, and SQL jobs. So it comes always comes with like some, some 10, 10 set of things we wanted to monitor from a BizTalk perspective. And a lot of places, when, when you look at the enterprise-wide monitoring solutions like uh, SCOM or HP Operation Manager or IBM Tivoli or Oracle Grid, or, it's just too complex for what you wanted to achieve. So I'm not, actually we're not competing with any of those guys, so that they are fine, like if you wanted to have like an enterprise-wide monitoring solution, they are fine, but when it wanted to go down into, into BizTalk monitoring, so it's, it's a challenging uh, it, it, to set it up and to maintain it and to educate people how to use it. So we wanted to make it as easy as possible. We'll see a demo like how quickly you can, you can set up monitoring. So, so that's one of our design goals. And there are over 40 core capabilities. It must be more now. The slide is, the slide is slightly outdated. So well, the way we are looking at it is like uh, for customers, they don't need to use all 40 of them. Even if you see like you know, three, four useful things, it's, it's, it's easy like, uh, to, to, it's easy decision to use BizTalk 360 because uh, it may take more expensive or for you to build uh, even those four features. So that's how we see it. Like not all customers use all the capabilities, uh, but but there are but there is enough capabilities for supporting big customers. We got some of the Fortune 100 companies here. Like few of them are here. Uh, so so they took very long time to design and and they are using it now. Okay, and the question is like, where do you need BizTalk 360? Like, okay, you got BizTalk admin console, everybody got used to it, and now we are talking about a brand new tool, BizTalk 360, like, where do you think it will fit in? And one thing I wanted to clarify here is like, we are not competing with BizTalk admin console. Like, it's, it's actually, we see it as a complementary tool. BizTalk admin console is way too powerful, and sometimes you don't need to have that level of power for certain things. Uh, for example, you don't go and create message boxes every day. You don't need to go and create host, in, host, host instances every day. You don't go and configure handlers every day. And you don't deploy things into your environment every day. So, but the, all those things are packed into BizTalk Admin Console. You don't want to give that tool to, uh, to uh, your normal support person who is going to work with the tool for day, day in, day out. So the way we project it is like, if you're really not worried about your developers messing around with the environment, you know, you're happy, like they can put some DLLs in, they can put some new code in, then, 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 then admin console is fine. You know, they can do whatever they want in the environment. So if you look at the picture, you know, the, the development environment and the initial system integration testing environment, they are fine. Like they, they, it's, it's a developer's playground area, they can do whatever they want. But when you move on to the next level of environments like user acceptance testing and system testing and pre-production and staging and emergency bug fix environment, 
all those kind of environments, you wanted to keep as much control as possible. You don't want people like your developers putting a secret patch into those environment without anybody's knowledge. And, and you wanted to know like somebody stopped something or somebody started something and all those kind of things. So that's where we see like you, we see maximum advantage you get out of Bistock 360. And also you see, we don't see as, we don't put it as 100% because we think you still need Bistock admin console to do certain things because Bistock 360 is not designed to do things like a deployment. Uh, we don't do anything with deployment. So we think deployment, depending on the size of the company, you do once a month, once a quarter, or some companies we have seen once a year. Like they don't touch their environment. for They will have a very large window to uh, put anything in the in the production environment. So, so our focus is not around deployment, and we don't do anything with the with the development either. So we don't do orchestration, debugger, and those kind of things, which are developer focused things. So we wanted to focus straight on the operation side of things. So if you if you once your application in production, like how can you uh, operate it on a day to day basis in a, in a much better way? And the another core part of the if the solution is is a fully customizable. So uh, so. If you don't want platform settings, you can take it off. So for example, if a normal support person, he's not interested to know like uh, what's the host setting, what's the host instance setting, and uh, what's the message box settings, and all those kind of things. He's only interested in the bunch of applications he's managing. So the, 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 the Business 360 UI itself is it's completely customizable. You can take things off, you can put things back. And then you can customize it based on either a separate group of people, like you can have an NT group, something like BPM operations team. And then you can assign this team will have access to platform settings, will have access to SQL instance and all those kind of things. Uh, and then if you don't want, you, you can take it off. So, so it's, 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 not a, it's not a very rigid tool, like it gives you full customization capabilities. And this is a common scenario, like uh, it's, you, you really don't want, don't need a, like a Bistock expert uh, for your operation side of things. Now I'm sure in each and every company you'll have somebody like Tom, like he's a super user and he will have access to each and every bit of the environment. So, so that's fine. So if you want to give Tom that level of access, you can do that. On the right hand side, you're seeing like your first level support people, somebody called Lisa, like she's, she's a very, she's not a Bistock person. She only re interested in managing these two applications. And imagine if you wanted to train somebody to do that operations. If you look at the left screen, there are so many things. Even if she's not using it, she needs to know like she shouldn't touch certain things, right? So, but on the right hand side, you can take everything off and you can make it look very simple, okay? She's responsible for managing those couple of applications and she needs to have access to something called topology and advanced event viewer and you can customize it. And that's what she will see. And they, they're both actually seeing the exactly same environment, but you can see the UI is completely different to uh, both of them. The shared infrastructure is, as I touched a few times, so if you have like, a, once you have a platform like Bistock, it will, you, and you keep on adding applications, at one stage it's going to look at what you're seeing on the left-hand side, maybe more, like, you know, you may have, like we are seeing customers with, with, with 1,000 applications, have you seen anything, anything at that range? So we are seeing, we are, just, we are working with a customer, and he is here actually. So 1,000 1, applications in a, in a Bistock environment, single environment. Uh, so, so that's the level of craziness we have seen. So you can imagine, <laughs> so you can, you can imagine giving, you know, everybody like Lisa and Claire and who doesn't know anything about Bistock and admin console and they open up 1,000 applications. So what am I going to do next, right? So, so this is what, the, this is our plan. So the Tom, who's a super user, it's fine. He can go and see whatever in the environment. And for Lisa and Claire, so okay, Lisa is responsible for some of the HR applications running in the environment, and you can assign permissions, and you can see she's only seeing the HR applications running in that environment. And Claire is from our finance department, and she can see the applications related to finance. Okay, uh, a single operational console is what is a, another target for us. So, so if you look at the right hand side, in order to support your uh, Bistock uh, applications, you need to have access to some of the tools that I've mentioned on the right hand side. So it's a Bistock Admin Console, SQL Management Studio, a BAM Portal, Event Viewer, Monitoring Consoles, Performance Monitors, ESB Portal, Message Box Viewer, and, and maybe a Custom Portal, and the list could be, it's varying, like, you know, like, 
it's so difficult for that person to jump on and off between different things. And also imagine you're taking somebody on board for your operational needs. And that person, I'm sure you need to spend like two months with somebody who's op who is supporting it to just to understand how you actually support your day-to-day -day operations, right? So there are so many factors in there. So our goal is to, there are, you always, you don't need to have everything. For example, the SQL management studio, your requirement is only to, you know, check the SQL jobs and you may, may want to run few queries and check few tables. You really don't need to have access to everything in the SQL studio. So we have taken all those key concepts to how people use different things, and we've just brought it in into this one single console, Bistro 360. So this is what we are doing. So we just taken off, and we identified why they are using that tool, and, and we just brought things in back into the console. For example, we got something called Advanced Event Viewer. It will go query everything in your group, and it will come. It will give it to you on a, on a UI. So you don't need to actually RDP into physical boxes to check the event viewer. You don't need to give admin rights to person to check the event viewer, right? So they, you can have very, very limited access to the BizTech environment, and you can be sure like uh, they can't do things. And also, uh, one of the common scenarios, like if you want to give read-only access to the environment, you don't want people to do anything. The very first level support people. Uh, uh, at the moment, it's difficult. It's, it's nearly impossible to do that. You can't give complete read-only access. So that's one of our design goals. Like you can give, like you are, you've got an offshore team in India, Bulgaria, wherever. So you don't want them to, you just want, want them to have a look, but don't touch anything. So you can give complete read-only access to the environment. And complexity abstraction is another area we spend a lot of time on. So a lot of the BizTalk concept, OK. Everybody acknowledges that BizTalk is a complex product. Because of the nature of what it's doing, it's going to be complex. Certain things like uh, throttling is not for everybody, right? So you need to have like a level of BizTalk expertise to understand uh, how your environment is behaving, whether it's throttled or not throttled. So what we have done with BizTalk 360 is like uh, we try to abstract it as much as possible. So these are the, the four things you, you can see. You got a, like a graphical message flow viewer, so you can actually visualize like uh, how your message is actually flowing through the system. And for this, you don't really need to do any custom development. We leverage the, the tracking data already stored in BizTalk, and we just put uh, some nice UI on top of it so people can drill down and see like, okay, this is how you receive the message, and this is how it traveled, uh, and, and you can visualize it very quickly. So you can imagine like if somebody non-BizTalk person uh, you can train them very quickly, saying, okay, this is how you receive the message, and this is how it should flow. And if it stops somewhere in the middle, then you know there is a problem, and, and you, t you do X, X, Y, and Z to resolve that thing. And throttling analyzer, we got a single page view, and it's, it's, a, it's a real, nearly a real time uh, capturing. Like we, we capture the data in real time every 15 seconds, and you can log into your server anytime. And with a single, there are two graphs basically one to monitor the published throttling, and one to monitor the delivery throttling. And, and there are a lot of help as well to, under, to, to, to explain to you like why that's happening, how you can mitigate it, and all those kind of things. And that's useful even for experienced people, like, you know, like. Normally, when you look at the performance counters, all you will get is, okay, it's a, it's, perform it's a delivery throttling number four. Okay, what is number four? Nobody keeps that in mind, right? It's process memory throttling. And you need to look at MSDN, and you need to look at things here and there to understand what it is. So we wanted to make this, all these complex things as abstract as possible. A backup DR visualizer is another thing. So lock shipping is the only option for setting up uh, backup and DR. Uh, a uh, lot of times, like uh, uh, people set it up, and they don't actually look into it whether it's working correctly or not working, and until the DR happens, and then they figure out your backup didn't the the the, D, the the jobs required for moving the files didn't work for last two weeks or something, and you end up rebuilding the environment, losing all your uh, backup DR strategy. So we have done uh, work on uh, something called backup DR visualizer. Once you set it up, then you will get a view of like whether it's healthy. What's the history records on the production side? What's the history record on the DR side? And, and, and then it, you'll have like a red and green indicators to show you like whether it's healthy or not healthy. And tracking manager is something like if you got a one single page view to understand how much tracking you have enabled on the, on the environment. And we got a bunch of uh, productivity tools. So advanced event viewer is one thing. So basically, we collect all the information from, uh, from different servers and keep it in a central place. 
and you can actually put rules around it. You don't need to collect each and everything like your, your firewalls and um, SQL user access and all those kind of things. You can see I'm interested in all the BizTalk related sources and it'll come collect everything and keep it in a central place and you can actually query against your whole BizTalk group from a single place. And we got something called integrated knowledge base. So whenever there is an exception like a service instance code, uh, you can basically attach a knowledge base to it. So when that happens next time, so it's right in the UI, you double click. And the first three tabs are what you normally see in the admin console, like uh, the general tab and the error tab and the message tab. And the last tab will show you like, okay, this problem is something we know that's happening in the environment. Uh, maybe we always receive this message with a wrong fax number from a customer, and that's the reason why it's failing. And you can put all those information in, and next time if that fails with that particular error code, you can open up, and then it's there. You can, you can figure out. Uh, we got custom SQL queries, so we identified like a lot of people, they maintain a bunch of SQL queries uh, against your management database, tracking database, uh, just to use some of the useful, useful queries. And that's one of the reasons why you need to have access to SQL Management Studio. But we built a complete UI where you, people can uh, store some queries, and we got complete uh, security around it. You can say like uh, who can add queries, who can edit queries, and all those kind of things. And once that's done, then you can actually share that query against your complete operation team. So, so some of the useful queries like, okay, see how many messages did we receive for this particular customer in, in this morning or something. You know, you can, you can capture that query and store it and your operation team can execute it and you, and you, you, can, get, you can get it. At the moment, what happens is like only a few set of people in the company will have those queries in their, in their desktop and they will use it and nobody knew about, the, they have some really useful queries, the operation people are using it. So you can, you can bring it on. Uh, the dynamic topology is another thing, like uh, since we know all the information about the environment, you can, you can actually have a dynamic view of your environment details, like you got four BizTalk servers and three SQL servers, and uh, you don't need to maintain Visio diagrams, which goes out of sync very quickly, and whenever you know, your manager asks for what's our infrastructure topology for this environment, people, I'm sure, you, you go back to Visio and start drawing it, right? So, so this is... It's a live information, it's up to date. You just click and you will have a full view of uh, your BizTalk SQL, the, the full topology. Uh, on, the, on the monitoring side of the story, like, uh, so we are, we are very BizTalk focused monitoring. So on top of uh, some of the basic things like uh, all the artifacts monitoring, like receive location, send ports, orchestration, those kind of things, we also got uh, very specific things are, which are BizTalk specific. For example, process monitoring. Uh, this is very interesting. This is something like uh, what happens if you haven't received something, right? So at the moment, it's difficult to set up monitoring for this one. Say you are expecting a message from your trading partner, and they didn't send you the message last night. It could be a patching on their side, or there's a problem on their side. You didn't receive it. But there's nothing ha since nothing happened on your system, there is no alert, or nobody knew, like, okay, we didn't process that message. And only after a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks later, depending on how good your manual processing is around, the reconciliation process is around, you'll only figure out after two days or three days or whatever time frame. So with process monitoring, what you can set is you can set, okay, I expect so many number of messages either every hour or every business day. Uh, from Monday to Friday, you can choose whatever days you want. And then if, if you don't receive that level of messages, then there is a problem, right? And you will get notified, okay, we haven't received it. And the same thing applies to the send side as well. So you've, you are supposed to send certain things to your trading partner. You didn't send it for whatever reason, like, you know, somebody changed the password on that uh, service account or something like that, and you didn't send the message. So you can set it either way. Uh, service instance monitoring is another uh, useful thing. Like you, lot of in lot of customers, we are seeing like people sitting and you know refreshing the admin console to keep an eye on the number of suspended instances, or whatever number of active instances or ready to run instances. So what you can do now is you can set alerts saying you, for this particular application, if you if you have so many instances are suspending, like you've got like 50 suspended instances for this application then you know it's a kind of a warning level. And if it reaches 75, 100, then you know there is a serious problem. Somebody need to look at it. So you can set up alerts for that one. So this is, as you can see, these are very BizTalk specific monitoring requirements, right? So nobody in the market is covering it, like HP OpenView or SCOM, or, because 
these are since we are very focused on biz talk, we just could go very deep in, we can understand the problem, uh, what the customers are facing, and we can go a bit deep into what's actually the problem biz talk customers are facing. And also we got something called interesting thing is negative monitoring. You, a lot of times you don't want things always to be running, right? Say, I can give an example. Like, a lot of people, like how many of you have host instances in a disabled state in your production environment? Right, a lot of people. Because you wanted to keep those host instances in a disabled state. You don't want somebody accidentally starting it. And there could be business implications because of starting that it will kick off some long running orchestrations or something. Uh, and this goes all over the place. You wanted certain receive locations to be in a stopped state, certain send ports to be in a stopped state, certain orchestrations to be in a stopped state, or whatever state. It's not a, not a started state. Could be unenlisted or, a, or a stopped or enlisted, whatever. So we got a monitoring specific for that. You can actually set what's your expected state for that particular artifact, and you can keep monitoring it. If that state changes to something which you really don't want, then you will get notification straight away. And also, a uh, few months ago, we also started a Windows 8 app. There is an app in the store. So if you, if you guys one of the Windows 8 uh, tablets or you are using Windows 8, you can go and search in the store. There is a first version of uh, Vista 360. And we are going to expand that uh, over the next few months and over a period of time. Right. I think we are going to go to the demo. Uh, how many of you have seen the product already or know about? OK, well. So that's that's good, <laughs> right? Okay. I think one thing I didn't I didn't tell you is this is a web-based tool. So that in itself is a big advantage for a lot of customers. Like we don't have a web-based management tool for uh, Bistock at the moment. So this is completely it's a web-based application. It's a, it's running on a silver light. Uh, we have strategies to move it to some other stable technology in the future, but at the moment it's it's silver light. Uh, so the, one of the reasons why we have ch chosen Silverlight uh, two, two, two and a half years ago is because uh, we wanted to give a ri rich experience to the users. Who, because this is the tool you're using day in, day out, throughout the day. We wanted to, to look nice, and we wanted to make sure they, they can manage whatever they want. If we wanted, don't want to give like a, like a web-based application. But uh, the, the web technology is moving very fast, and we, can, uh, and we start already wo started working on it. And we, and we should be able to match what we have now in web in next few months. So we are, we are working on it. But at the moment, it's silver light. So we, as I said, there's a lot of dashboards throughout the application. So what you're seeing here is an environment level dashboard. And as soon as somebody logs into this environment, you can whenever you see something red, you know there is a problem. And then, and then they can take action towards that. And as you, one thing I wanted to point out, you know, like whenever I'm showing a demo, you know, I always want to do what's the latest, right? So this, what the version you're seeing here is just the last build from last Friday. So, so some of the features are coming in the next version, uh, version 6.0. Uh, that's uh, somewhere in February. Uh, but hopefully it should be stable enough to show the demo. But I'm just a word of caution. OK. Uh, I'm going to start off with the feature that uh, we are wo working on for version 6.0. It's called Search Artifacts. Uh, basically, it's driven by one of our customer. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an oil company. And as I mentioned, they got like 1,000 applications. And that's a goal. They will have 1,000 applications next year. And as you can imagine, this is a traditional whatever Vista admin console or even the original version of Vista 360 is not capable of handling it. You open the tree view, and it's going to scroll for 20 minutes, right? So, so it's not going to work. And what we have done is we made something called a search capability for artifacts. So you can search on anything. For example, this application, uh, you can go and search. And uh, it's, it's a 10 at the moment. Uh, if I increase it, you can increase it to whatever. And also, you can do queries like, OK, I'm interested in only finance-related stuff. And this is all your finance-related application. And you can, from there, you can drill down, and you can, you can navigate to that application, and then you can manage it. And this, get, this gets very interesting for other artifacts, like you know, for orchestration. You search orchestration, and you can drill down. OK, I wanted to do the EDI one. And you can say, I want the status. Maybe you know, I want the application, the status to be started or something. And you can drill down. And you can imagine if you have like 500 orchestrations and you wanted to drill down. And, and, and the, the set filter, you can, you can add more, actually. You can do what application, and you can do what uh, host name, and things like that. 
So you can drill down and, and, and you can search and then you can action on, that, uh, on those uh, artifacts. And you can see the properties uh, and things like that. Uh, you, you may not have too many of the orchestration, but a lot of people have a lot of schemas, right? So you, easily you'll have like 200, 300 schemas in your environment. And that again becomes sometimes challenging, like you wanted to check the root element name and target namespace, and it becomes complex. So you can do something like, okay, I'm interested in maybe something with soap. Okay, that's soap. And then you can say maybe body element, uh, it's soap. So this, it's, it's very useful, right? So you can drill down and see whether it's deployed correctly, or if you want to action on certain artifacts, you can do that. So this is coming in our next release, and we already finished the development. And, and in fact, this, we reached a stage where like, the customers are actually paying for certain features. Like We are a self-funded company, but we reached a stage where <laughs> customers think it's much more easy for them to fund us and do certain features. So this is completely funded by this company. But, but for us, the agreement is like whatever we are building, we should always think about the wider audience. We don't really spend too much time on it any customer specific feature. So this one is really, it's, it's a useful feature. We said we agreed and that's going to come up. Uh, applications, you got a list of applications and we got certain things added to it. Like you can see the, the suspended instances count here and, and you can go to each application and we got like a application level dashboard uh, and you, you, can, you can manage uh, certain things. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail, but I, I hope most of you guys are Bistro guys and you understand the concepts here. So we got a, the dashboard wherever possible to give enough information to the support people. So this one you can see straight away if somebody is managing this application and when they see there is something wrong, uh, it's highlighted in, in, in red. And also the interesting thing here is the host instances are also highlighted. So you may have 50 host instances in that environment but only maybe two or three required to run this particular application. So those things are highlighted and those health is uh, important for the overall health of that application as well. So, so you, you, can, you can do that. And another important aspect I want to show you here is the user access uh, policy. Uh, I'm going to the settings tab. I'm sorry about the animation. It looks okay here, but I know it looks really bad on the, on the projector. So the way we do it is I uh, choose the environment, and we also support multiple environments through a single installation. So a lot of our customers have a bunch of uh, the test environments through one single installation, and you, you can easily flick between multiple test environments from a single place. So in this case, for example, I got a person called Mike Watson. You can also assign permission at the NT group level as well, it's not necessarily a, at the individual user level. So you can have something like BPM workflow team or BPM operations team, and you can assign permissions to that. And you can see this for this person, I have assigned only like some finance related applications, and we are given uh, permission to certain things like uh, topology, advanced event viewer, etc. So, so what I had done is I just impersonated that user in a different browser. Uh, so it says IE, I, I just impersonated as this person, so Mike Watson. And they're both actually accessing exactly the same environment. And you can see he got access only to those set of applications. And, and if you look at the complexity, the left-hand side is a super user with all the applications. And he got a lot of things. But for this person, uh, he got access to uh, only set of applications for which he got permission to. And all the dashboards are context sensitive as well. So, uh, so for example, in this one, uh, there is, it's showing there are some suspended instances here. And if you look at that one, that's actually coming from something called a simple messaging uh, application, so for which this person is not interested in. So that's why you're not seeing the bar at the top. So everything is context sensitive. So you don't want to confuse the support people with more information that's not relevant to them. So we just make sure it's, it's all covered. So. OK, uh, on the platform setting side of things, so we got uh, dashboards. Uh, so, so for example, we got a dashboard at the host host level, and this is one of the useful view. Like sometimes you wanted to know at the, what's actually running inside this particular host. So this view actually gives you that information, like what orchestrations running, what receive ports and send ports and things like that. So to find out this information, you really need a BizTalk expert, and it it take, may take a couple of hours for him to work out actually what's running inside that particular host. So this is just an example, like 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 how much we concentrated on like giving as much information as possible in an intuitive way to the to the operation people. 
the, the host instances, um, you, you, can, uh, you can start and stop, and you, you, can, you can do whatever things. And one thing I want to cover at this stage is the governance auditing part. So if you look at uh, the governance auditing, so this is something I just did. And it uh, captures your Windows identity, and it tells you at, okay, 16th of January, 1216, this person changed the state of the host instance from whatever state before to this one. So you can keep the data for whatever period you wanted to keep based on your company governance policy, and you can go back and you can always check it out. And we are the governance, we do things at a application level, like any orchestration, send port, receive location, things like that, a host instance level, and also at the service instances level, like somebody terminated a message or somebody resumed a message which was not supposed to be resumed. So all those kind of things are, are captured. Uh, we got uh, dashboard for the BizTalk server level, and you can see, uh, so you, people can access the, the event viewer right in the UI, so they don't actually need to go to the uh, RDP into the physical box to access it. And also, you can see what are the host instances running in that one. And we also get some, tr this looks like a trivial information, like, okay, IIS is running. But if you look at scenarios where you have like uh, eight BizTalk boxes and only two boxes got IAS, and you want to quickly figure out where are our WCF services running, it, it takes like 15, 20 minutes, right, to figure out where is IAS hosted out of those eight boxes, right? But, but here you can, you can figure out very quickly. And these icons are also context sensitive. So if you, if you look at this one, uh, it shows there is a globe sign there just to show you like the IAS is also running on that. On that. So we, we concentrated on a very deep level like, okay, every single thing, little thing helps you to do some in a, in a productive way. Okay, I'm just going to rush through very quickly. Uh, uh, the backup DR, man, uh, DR is, is like a, it's a single page view. It just shows you like a... Uh, the whole DR setup, and whenever you see red, uh, you know exactly what the problem is. Uh, and uh, on the data side of things, uh, you got uh, you can query all the, the, the message box data, tracking data, BAM data, uh, custom SQL, and ESB exceptions all in one single place. So you're not switching between uh, multiple things, like you're not going to BAM portal, you're not going to ESB portal. Uh, you're not going to SQL Management Studio to run some queries. It's all in one place. And the, and the security is it's all controlled in one place as well. So, so you don't need to uh, go and do things at different places. Uh, the message box query is uh, it's a pretty standard stuff. And you can see there is a question mark here. So this, there is a knowledge base information for this particular event. And you, when you double click, and you can see your, all your normal error information. At the end, you can see, OK, so OK, there is a due to some blah, blah, blah reasons. And you can, you can stick it. And then next time, if the same thing happens with so the exactly same error code, that information is there. You, know, like you don't need to go and spend additional 45 minutes trying to diagnose why this is happening. Because most of the time, it's, you always start from scratch, right? Even people forget things. And you, most of the time, you start again. So, so we wanted to make it as easy as possible. Uh, on the custom SQL side, like you people maintain a bunch of SQL queries like a send ports not started or you know, send ports to a specific location. And you can add, add your own queries. And if you want, you can modify the existing ones. Uh, and this is our standard queries. Uh, so you, uh, uh, you can maintain whatever you want. Uh, and we can control it, uh, who got access to do certain things, like uh, who can add queries, who can edit queries, and things like that. Uh, the tracking data, you can access tracking data, but there's one thing I want to show you uh, is a service name, BAM inbound. So this is just a sample from the SDK. <coughs> so this is the graphical flow I was uh, mentioning earlier. So this one is a standard SDK sample. You can see that the, you receive the message through the inbound side, and it picked up by an orchestration, second orchestration, and third orchestration, and then finally went out somewhere, right? OK, so and then you can click on each one of them, and you, need to f you can figure out, OK, where actually you picked up the message, and finally, where did it go? Like, so this information is, it's, 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 we're not doing anything fancy here. Like, it's basically a graphical view of your message flow based on your tracking data. So the, the one you get from admin console is a, is a flat uh, text view, so which requires people to understand how things work. You need a BizTalk expert to do that. So, but for us, it's OK. Anybody should be able to understand what's going on. OK, the BAM is straightforward. I won't go there. So you can access BAM data there. 
a topology, so it picks up the topology diagram automatically and, and then you will, uh, if you've got a multi server environment, uh, you should be able to look at it straight away. Uh, it's advanced even viewer, like uh, you collected information from everywhere and then you're actually querying against uh, the, your full Vista group from one single location. So uh, you, you, can, you can access it and you can also see the, the knowledge base is also present for even viewer. So if something with 5410 is a MQ problem we are aware of, then you just put a knowledge base to it. Uh, you, you click and then that knowledge base information is it's available there. So, so you can attach knowledge base to event viewer and you can attach it to the service instances as, as well. Uh, the SQL instance, you can access SQL instance like uh, what's your uh, databases and what's the current data size, log size. You don't want the, your data to go grow to like 20 gig or something. So you can easily ask your operation person, have a look at this one and if it's unusual size, otherwise, <coughs> Somebody need to have access to SQL Server, and also more importantly, they need to know how to calculate the disk size and things like that. People don't do it unless, until you crash it, right? So, so that's that's one of our goal. And also, you can access all the jobs and what's their status, lost run status, and things like that. So, we try to avoid people going to SQL Server as much as possible. You probably you don't need to go. Like, you have all the information required uh, in this one place. Uh, governance auditing we already covered. Uh, message box viewer, I think Guru mentioned in his keynote like they're going to bring message box viewer mainstream into the product, right? Because it's it's a it's such a valuable tool. Like I'm I'm sure most of you guys are already using it, and if you have, if you experience raising a, a ticket with Microsoft, the first thing they will ask you is run the message box viewer because that's the only way they can capture all the information and they know exactly whether you're running on the right service pack, right hotfix, and whether there are too many zombie messages in the message box and all those kind of things. So what we had done is like instead of uh, recreating all those things, we integrated message box viewer into Vista 360. You install it from the Microsoft uh, MSDN site and then you configure it and you can schedule it to run every day or every week or something like that. and then. And then it will show up all the critical errors right in the UI, non-critical errors, everything. And more, most importantly, you can actually set up alerts. Like if there are so many critical errors reported by message box viewer, then send me a ma send me a notification, whatever, like an email or SMS or things like that. So it's, this is very useful when you're on a patching scenario. Like if you you all people always do Windows patches, right? So something broken and, and message box viewer is good enough to capture that information most of the time. So you're just taking advantage of a, of a great tool within Vista 360. <coughs> okay, and alert history is okay. Let me quickly go to the monitoring side of the story. Uh, so the, we wanted to make uh, monitoring as simple as possible. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly do a monitoring sample. Okay, okay. Let me do. It's a. I'm going to name an alarm. Something called Bistock Summit uh, demo. I'm going to put uh, maybe for simplicity. I'm just going to say something like this. And we got two different types of alarm. So there's a regular alarm and a threshold alarm. So regular alarm is basically used for people like environment owners. Uh, I'm I'm the owner of the production environment or a UAT environment, and I wanted to get a status like every day, like 10 o'clock. I wanted to know like everything is healthy or not healthy, in spite of whether it's healthy or not healthy, you wanted to get a notification. <laughs> so you can go and say, okay, Monday to Friday, uh, send me a message at 10 o'clock, you can set that one. On the other side, it's a threshold-based uh, uh, monitoring, so you can set, a, we will configure various things. So for example, the receive location state is changed from started to stopped, so that's a threshold violation. So you can configure a threshold violation for various things. So, so those are the two things. We also have some of the advanced capabilities like we, we support um, SMS out of the box. So we got our own gateway so we don't ask people to set up their external uh, providers. We got it ourselves. And also a lot of customers using HP Operation Manager, right? Like, uh, and the, the, the monitoring story with Bistock is really poor with HP OpenView. Like, so Michael wrote a white paper back in 2007. Uh, I was a co-author of it and that that document is it's still valid. It's, it's a lot of things. HP didn't invest anything on Bistock side of things to improve the monitoring, right? So people who are using HP Operation Manager are a bit stuck when it comes to Bistock monitoring. So what we have done is you can take all the advantage of Bistock 360, but you can send alerts directly to HP Operation Console. So 
you really don't need to use the, the smart plugins that provided by HP. You use Vista 360, but you get the notification right in the HP console. So that's because when it comes to monitoring, people don't want to have too many consoles, right? They want they already used to HP console and they want the alerts to be there. So we we, we got an integration for HP operation console, and we got some advanced things which uh, probably we don't want to go there. So we just created a simple alarm. We didn't say anything Bistock specific here. Uh, okay, come on. <laughs> okay. Okay, once the alarm is configured, next thing you can do is you can go to applications. And I'm going to go to the EDI application. And basically, you can choose this uh, alarm I just created. And I say I wanted to monitor all this orchestration. Let's say I wanted to be, it must be started. And you can see it gone red because this is basically you, you configured monitoring for all those orchestrations. And it's, it went red automatically because the current state and the expected state are not matching. But if you, if you think this is the correct state for your environment, then you can say I want this to be in a stopped state and I want this to be in a stopped state. And you can see it gone green because that's exactly what you want. Even though it's not the right state, it doesn't look healthy, but in some cases that's what you want. So you can do that. And for receive location, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You can say it must be enabled. Uh, service instances, you can go and configure it. Uh, send ports, uh, you can say it must be started. So basically what you have done now is you configured your monitoring. 10 minutes, it's, it's there. All the basic configuration, it's there. And this is the same way you can go and say, OK, I, got, I want to monitor certain things in my BizTalk server. And I wanted to say, OK, for this particular thing, I wanted to monitor all my disks. And you can see it's, it's saying uh, red, because I'm really running out of disk space in this laptop. I got two gig left. So so it's just highlighting it. And on the entry services, you can say I wanted to make sure all these things are running. Uh, system resources, I wanted to make sure the CPU and memory is at a certain level. And the event log is, is very powerful. You can, you can go and configure, like I wanted to monitor all the BizTalk related stuff. And OK, these are my different uh, BizTalk related sources. And you can set up, OK, if there are so many errors or warnings or information in the last uh, 30 minutes or 60 minutes, uh, you just monitor it. And even this could be very powerful. Like everything writes something to the event viewer, right? So you can say if the MQ adopter is failing, you can capture that particular event ID and say, if this happens so many times within the last 20 minutes, raise an alert. And if you see MSI installer, like if you're deploying stuff and the MSI installation is failing, you, you can capture that uh, event ID and you, you can set monitoring for that. At the SQL instance level, you can do that for the, all the jobs. And the, and the environment level, you can monitor you know, the, 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 the host instances must be started. And a lot of people using web endpoints like uh, uh, the, uh, the HTTP endpoints and web services and things like that. So you can, you can go and say something like, uh, OK, I wanted to monitor uh, Microsoft, for example, and say uh, any, any, any HTTP endpoint. Uh, say um, our expected status is 202. Uh, okay, it gone red. You can see the return uh, expected is 202, but it actually returned 200. So you can say, okay, I want uh, 200 back. It should go. So it should go green. So you can monitor all your uh, web endpoints and HTTP endpoints and things like that. Uh, message box viewer uh, already uh, I mentioned. So so those things can be configured. We also got a monitoring dashboard. So people put this one. Let me see whether it captured the BizTalk demo. So this is just what we did now, right? So we, we configured uh, some applications and configured some things in the BizTalk server level. And, and you basically configured your monitoring in 10, 15 minutes. So even bigger, even bigger environments, you may spend one or two days to configure it. So you wanted to make it as simple as possible. So you, you, can, you, can, you can get to the, because the one thing we've seen is like, people don't have monitoring in a lot of cases, right? If I, if I ask a question, I'm sure 50% will go up. They don't have. They don't have monitoring because it's too complex to set something up. So we wanted to make it as simple as possible. And, uh, and all the uh, errors are tucked in nicely, so you can see why they are red. And a lot of our customers have this displayed in big screens and during the operations, and, and, and it's all fully covered.